Shalom everyone. Welcome to Hebraic Awakening. I just wanted to do an intro to the sacrifices, the blood sacrifices and the relationships. I understand that this season is full of transitions. Um, there's a lot of things going on in the world, but that just confirms why I am still in the spirit of the seventh month or Yom HaKippurim because I can see that a lot of us do not understand that particular feast and we do not take it seriously. And I am a believer in following our Hebraic calendar. So I believe in following Rosh Kodesh, the head of the month. I believe that the months have um, prophetic spiritual meaning. They have numbers attached to it, tribes attached to it, and I can back that all up with scripture. I have a video talking about that. However, because this is the eighth month, this is a month of new beginnings because we're ending and beginning things at the same time, and we can see that um, in the earth. We can see that in the governments. And the earth is speaking to us and it's telling us that it's time to slow down. There's transition, there's hibernation. Look at the, the um, animals, look at the, the trees. They're throwing off their leaves. It's time to be quiet. It's time to listen. It's time to absorb. Uh, we have went through our high holy days and now we're coming down and we need to put our ear to the mouth of the most high. However, I can tell that we didn't do that because there's so much talking <laughs> going on in this month and you can't even hear. You can't even hear what the Most High has to say because a lot of us are putting our ear to the social media streets. So for me, I am still in what I would call the seventh month um, and I am in my quiet time. I no, I need to do videos. I have a business. I have a homeschool hub. I am a high school teacher in a public high school when I'm trying to reach our people so that they can transition before the big transition happens, trying to encourage our people. However, we are somewhere else right now. We are caught up. And I hope that you can hear the message of Yom HaKippurim. I hope you can hear the message of the sacrifices and how it is crying out to us to have an authentic love relationship with the Most High. I hope you can hear that in this time, we need to be quiet for, for believers. We need to be quiet and we need to be attuned to the spirit of the most high we need to have our ear to wisdom because she is speaking and she is getting us ready for a bigger transition that will happen um in the next year but if we have our ear to the social media streets um our ear to people who call themselves prophets and they are not our ear to leaders in the faith who are not and you can't discern you can't discern what's real you can't discern what's fake and let me tell you something if you have got caught up in these prophets and these leaders that's telling you things that are not real repent and turn back to Yah. turn back to your first works that's what we all need to do so for me i am not going to speak about anything that's going on in this month right i'm going to listen to wisdom and slow down so i can hear the strategy for the year ahead all right so i am going to be talking about torah okay that that's what my uh channel is about and my channel is about healing so we don't eat uh manna or bread that's filled with trauma right so that's what i'm about healing and understanding Torah. So um, that is what I wanted to say before we jump into this video. I hope it helps you and enjoy. Shalom everyone. Welcome to Hebraic Awakening. I am still in the spirit of the seventh month. 
at the time of recording, we have entered into the eighth month, seven plus one. So I guess they go hand in hand. And um, the seventh month was really fantastic. All of our feast days and Yom HaKippurim for my personal household was explosive. If you didn't um, see my community uh, post, my husband was involved in a should have been fatal truck accident however he was the actual <laughs> kippur uh and you know that story is just phenomenal how on young kippurim my husband i'm telling him to come home because we got shabbat and we about to honor um Yom kippurim and so come on home and he has stopped and got some fuel and if you didn't know in trucking, you got to watch it because a lot of the fuel stations, um, trucking stop, truck stops, they put water in the gas, in the gas or in the diesel. So he had to pull over because the truck was acting funny and he had to pull over on the side of the road and it was getting dark. And he, he was pulling that truck for a while until he could get to where he felt was safe. And this was in Georgia. Y'all know how near Atlanta, y'all know how they drive. Terrible. So he's coming, he's coming on and he pulls over and he says, honey, I got a lot of water in my tank. I know it. I can't see it's too dark. So I'm going to sleep here for the night, get up, drain the water and come on home. I'm like, okay, but he's like, I feel, um, I don't feel like it's safe because they driving so fast and they don't care about my lights. They don't care about me pulled over. They just flying. And, you know, if you've ever driven an ATL, you know, if you ever driven near ATL, you know. And I was like, this, this don't sound good. And so he said he was going to pray. So, you know, we prayed into the gates of Shabbat and Yom HaKippurim. And my husband said, I'm going to lay down, you know, and I'm going to pray all night. And that's exactly what he did. Sure enough, one something in the morning, one thirty in the morning, he calls me and texts me the pictures. And I'm trying to comprehend how did he walk out of that accident along with the driver. So the driver was 21 years old. He never stopped. He never put on his brakes. He said he was bending down trying to get a drink and that was that was it. And mind you, my husband works for the ports. We have our own business. So we had a port trailer, not a regular trailer. That is really what, what really like shielded my husband. So if you know anything about the port containers, still baby. And, but that man was going so fast, I had never put on brakes, that he pushed that steel container and the tractor, which was in park, with the parking brake on. And he pushed the whole entire thing and pushed it into the woods off of the, you know, the side of the road where it was. was. And my husband, he showed me the photo of him facing the woods. And he said, Thankfully, something from the container stuck in the dirt so that he wouldn't go slamming into all of the trees. And he showed me where it stopped. And the other man's trailer was cut in half. Like half of that man's, not trailer, his tractor was underneath my husband's tractor. It was a whole mess. I, I still can't comprehend how that man walked out. I just... It has to be y'all, uh, right? Because naturally, I'm like, half of his trailer was underneath. You can see the pictures where it was cut. And you can look on my community tab. So how did he walk out of that? All he had was a broken arm. 21 years old. I was like, you know what? He ran right into the Kippur, <laughs> right into the covering, which was my husband, because he had been praying all night. And so... My husband is doing okay. You know, he got some aches and pains, but, you know, he is ready to rock and roll. And I'm like, no, you're not. You go sit down. So he's been sitting down for a while. And guess what? Our truck is still 
fixable. It, the whole thing is nothing but the grace and mercy of the Most High. So with that being said, this leads me to this teaching because a lot of us who are believers in Messiah have a hard time with Yom Kippurim and why we should even acknowledge it. But it's such a sacred time. And yes, Messiah, you know, is our Kippur. You know, he is the final sacrifice, right? So that we don't have to make all of these sacrifices again. However, that set apart time is so much more, right? I mean, Messiah is it. He is the door. He is the go. However, the sacrifices show us how to have relationships relationship with the most high and relationship with each other so the sacrifices we're going to talk about the sacrifices really quickly as quick as i can i'm not going to go exhaustive i never do because i want to leave you room to explore and to study but i want us as north american you know, believers to get a deeper meaning of the sacrificial system because we are so far removed from the culture and the time that in 2024, we do not understand, well, why was they had all that blood and guts everywhere? That was unnecessary. And so because you have your biases on how you feel and the culture that you are currently in, you cannot connect with the culture of ancient times and how people viewed sacrifices and their way of living and how they worship and how they serve their Elohims. We're so far removed from it. So let's travel back in time. Let's put our Hebrew thinking caps on and let's understand our ancestors. For those of us that come from the 12 uh, tribes of Israel, Let's understand our ancestors so that we can sit and tell the next generation, this is why the sacrifices were so important. And this is why honoring Yom Kippur, even though we are Messianic believers, is of the utmost importance because there's so much to this sacred holy day. So we know that in Leviticus 6, right, we know that... It was commanded, right? The instructions was given to Aaron and his sons about the law of burnt offering. We understand, right, the basic meaning of the animal sacrifices, but we cannot relate spiritually. We just don't get it. And a lot of people don't either. A lot of teachers don't either. And I don't confess to know it all. But I took the time this year to draw closer because I really wanted to understand Yom <laughs> Kippurim. And when I asked that question, he showed me Yom HaKippurim through my husband. And I was like, whoa, what a lesson. What a lesson. Learning the relationship, the sacrifice, um, blood shed, the whole thing. And so I'm like, yeah, um, Yom ha, ha Kippurim's just the day of coverings, something I will never forget how I drew closer to the Most High through that experience and um, studying the sacrifices, all right? So let's study. Um, the sacrificial instruction, they were also divine instructions to teach us how to spiritually connect with the Most High. During the sacrifices, all of our senses are being used, sight, smell, touch, your feeling, your hearing, your taste, okay? All of it is being used as you are experiencing the sacrifices, as the people are looking at the priest do the sacrifice, all right? We believe that these sacrifices are shadows of the reality of what is going on in the Shamayims. How the Most High wants us to spiritually relate to him. So he takes us through the experience of the animal sacrifices. So if you're just going to look at the animal sacrifices as a bunch of blood and guts and stuff, you know, uh, then, you know, you're going to miss it. 
because you have to put on your ancient Hebraic mind, not your Western mind. You're going to have to put it on. Apostle Shaul, along with the other Talmudim or disciples, experienced both. So let's just turn there really quickly. All right. Acts 21, verse 26. The next day, Paul took the men and purified himself along with them. Then he went to the temple to give notice of the date when the days of purification would end and the offering would be made for each of them. So let's go up a little bit because this is showing us relationship. This is showing us that Apostle Shaul, he did not go against doing, doing Torah, doing the customs, doing the rituals. So verse 20, when they heard this, they praised Elohim. They said to Paul, you see, brother, how many thousands of Jews have believed and all of them are zealous for the law. They have been informed that you teach all Jews who live among the Gentiles to turn away from Moses, telling them not to circumcise their children or live according to our customs. What shall we do? They will certainly hear that you have come. So do we, so do what we tell you, basically do what we say. There are four men with us who have made a vow, Nazarite vow, custom, rituals. Take these men, join in their purification rites and pay their expenses, offerings, so that they can have their heads shaved. Then everyone will know that there is no truth in these reports about you, but that you yourself are living in obedience to Torah. As for the Gentile believers, we have written to them our decision that they should abstain from food sacrificed to idols, from blood, from the meat of strangled animals, and from sexual immorality. The next day, Paul took the men and purified himself along with them then he went to the temple to give notice of the day when the days of purification would end and the offering would be made for each of them so even in the renewed covenant even in the books that uh tell us about the stories of the apostles and the talmudim the disciples and yeshua the letters they all still have the rituals and the customs, right, um, that they were used to, that they were used to, all right? So the kafar, the kafar, let's go there. So a lot of people say, well, why do you make Yom HaKippurim? Because it's the day of coverings. It's the day of sacrifices many sacrifices right okay kafar covering in order for us to connect to our elohim we must be covered he cannot abide in sin so we need a substitute in order for us to come before his holiness so you just cannot approach elohim in all your little naked fleshly, sinful, flesh, mind, scattered brain, 50,000 thoughts going 50,000 ways. You must be covered. So you have to have a covering so that you don't explode from the inside out because you have approached his holiness. He is so holy and so righteous and so full of love and mercy and justice. You would just explode from your little sinful state. So you need to be covered covered so that you can approach him so think about a head covering think about covering up you know so you can approach a king all right let's think about that read hebrews what i have 4 and 16 so let's go there if y'all didn't know i i work now at a high school child it might as well be a lean on me y'all ever seen lean on me y'all too young for that 
uh, Lean On Me High School. Child, I am at a rough ghetto <laughs> high school trying to make a difference. So a sister is tired. I'm trying to juggle and balance, but I ain't doing a good job, you know, because I'm trying to hear the most high. What am I exactly supposed to be doing? How I'm supposed to be doing it? So y'all bear with me, honey, please. Hebrews 4 and 16. Let us then approach Elohim's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. So the only way you're going to approach him with confidence is to be covered. The works of Messiah, the blood atonement of Messiah just don't mean you could come butt naked, you know, with your flesh like, yeah. I'm a believer in Messiah and I could come all uncovered. You need the covering of Messiah. You, you, you need a covering. And for those that do not believe in a covering and you do not have anybody sacrificing for you, I would love to know what you are using for a covering as you approach the Most High. If you are not a believer in Messiah, and you don't believe in the blood atonement work and you think that's Greek, you think that's Christian, you think that's crazy, you think that's unheard of. What is the explanation for you to cover yourself to approach the great Elohim? Because it sure ain't your good works. Because your good works is trash compared to the most high. That, that's a problem that we have. Well, we're going to run around and do good. And approach the throne. If you don't get out of here. Because sometimes our good is still not right. As my husband say. You could be doing a good thing. And it not be righteous. <laughs> but the Messiah. Who who good? Who, who good? Because that's the problem. That's the problem. We ate from that tree. Of knowledge of good and evil. So we think we got. We, we think we can say what's good. Well, I fed the homeless and I did this. So you're going to approach the most high because you fed the homeless. And it that's not a good enough covering. Sorry. So, you know, when I ask that question, no one can ever say how they are to approach the most high without the sacrifices. There's no temple. There's nothing being sacrificed. So what do you cover with? And it shows ain't your dusty head covering. You look dirty to leak. It's not that. It isn't. All right. <laughs> I be trying not to laugh at myself, but then I hear what I said and I be like, dang, Tina. But it's true. Got your old dusty to leak, your little dirty head wrap you ain't washed in two years. And you were talking about that's that's good enough to approach the most high. It ain't. That just make me mad because he is holy. And he is merciful and he is full of righteousness and love and compassion and empathy. You sitting up here uncovered. Anyway, many of our sacrifices were brought voluntarily and brought with joy. So those of us that love to hug trees and plant flowers and we're vegetarians, I get it. But let's Put on your ancient mind and your little ancient hat and go back in time, right? And understand why they had joy when they were bringing sacrifices. They were not just bringing sacrifices for sin. And let me tell y'all something else while we add it. No one could bring a sacrifice for sin that was done intentionally. Intentional sin always had to be done with repentance of heart, a change of heart, and prayer. So, your little blood sacrifice, the, the little animals couldn't even cover you for intentional sin. So when you did intentional sin, you was just real scared up until <laughs> Yom Kippur and the 10 days of awe. 
because your life <laughs> that was written in that book, if you believe that, written in the book, the book of life and the book of death, and Jump Kipper Reed came around, and the Most High didn't have mercy or grace, and you had intentional sin. So intentional sin didn't have a specific covering. That was always done through repentance. Now, unintentional sin, we're going to talk about that. Accidental sin, you could cover for. But not intentional sin, not going over to your neighbor's uh, house, sleeping with his wife or sleeping with the husband, and you know that. Mm -mm. Nope, there was no covering for that. So if you thought that, that there was a covering for intentional sin, it was not. The sacrifices is a form of worship, all right? So again, we were never saved, brought salvation by the sacrifice. These were coverings, okay? Okay, Yeshua's sacrifice, he is our covering to be covered as we approach the Most High through his purified blood, right? Through his purified state, sinless state, we are using Yeshua as a covering. All right. Um, the sacrifices are our covering and shield of protection as we approach the Most High. And I, I just be looking at people, how they approach the Most High. And I'm like, man, yes, I sit down and talk to him. I do. I sit down and talk to him, but I'm talking about our life, our lifestyle, and how we approach him, and we just do what we want to, and we think he our friend, and what's up, you know what I'm saying, most high was sitting, I'm like, yeah, but your life better be lined up the way he wants you to be lined up, because a lot of us, if you pay attention, right after, um, right before, and, and during the seventh month, a lot of people been transitioning left and right. It happens every year. A lot of people have been transitioning. And I'm like, man, look, I believe. I believe in the book of life and the book of death. I, I already went through that during our midrash about the book of life, how Moshe testified to that and Dawid testified to that. They understood the book of life and the book of death. <laughs> so... I believe in that, and I don't believe in just um, living your life how you want to and there's no consequences. You know, I just believe, all right? So when we read Hebrews 4 and 16, and we already read that, it puts it into context. Let us then approach Elohim's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. That's what the coverings do. All right, the first sacrifice, because this just showing us relationship. The Ola, the burnt offering, Leviticus 7 and 8. Two types of sacrifice, one for the community, one for the individual. This is a free will offering. The only offering completely dedicated to the Most High. Ola, which means that which rises, suggests that this sacrifice gives nothing in return. So you don't get nothing. This is a free will offering. You giving it to the Most High from the heart, from the soul, you know, and you're giving and you're not getting anything in return. This is just your love offering to the Most High. Um, this was an offering to show that you surrendered your all to the Most High. All right, let's turn to Romans 12 and 1. Make sure that scripture is lining up with what I'm talking about. Because I've been taking so many notes. Romans 12 and 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of Elohim's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to Elohim. This is your true and proper worship. So the great sage, the Torah master, 
Torah scholar is always talking about sacrifices. So these scriptures that I'm pulling up is to help you to see that Apostle Shaul is helping us to spiritually connect the sacrifices to the grace and mercy and love of the Most High. Because he knew that especially the Gentile believers would not get it. So he has to bring it to us and help us to understand how this is about a re spiritual relationship with the Most High. Not a bunch of sacrifices with blood and guts being splattered everywhere. This is a love thing going on. All right. Let's go to the next one. The Korbanot Minka. This is a grain offering. It's bloodless. It's unleavened bread. This is voluntary. Okay. Brought with each olas. It was brought with each burnt offering and a peace offering. And it was also brought with a festival offering. So this is a, a, brain, a grain or bread offering. Wine libation was done with this showing relationship and the salt was shared. So when you see bread, wine, <laughs> and salt, what do you think? It is a covenant type of offering. A covenant is a relationship between parties, between who? Us as a family, us as a people, us as a community, breaking this I mean, not breaking, but breaking bread, drinking the wine of joy, the salt as the covenant, sealing everything together, eating it with the most high. Leviticus 2 and 10. This is a relationship meal offering. Y'all see that? This is like having a nice supper with the most high. Using the basics, bread, wine, salt. And we see that in covenant meals, right? So this is a relationship offering the salt. Again, placed each other, all of us in covenant with the most high. All right. The priests were the ones who took part in this covenant. This was a, the most holiest offering by fire. This particular offering was only eaten by a son of a Aaron inside of the tabernacle or the courtyard. It was smeared with oil and offered with frankincense. A portion must, must touch the altar. All right. Let's go to the peace offering. You see that you can see Shalom in there. All right. This is also a voluntary offering. Um, brought for fulfilling vows, a thanksgiving offering. It was also associated with celebration. Male or female animal could be brought. The whole animal is not burned. The fat, the kidneys, the lobe of the liver, and the fat tails were, were burned. And they also all represent something. So I'm not going over that. But y'all know the kidneys represent what? The liver represents what? Y'all should know this by now. If you've been following me for a while, you should know what the kidneys and at least the liver represent. And then you can spiritually see what Yah is saying to give up in the sacrifice. Okay, so kidneys, come on. We know that you're the seat of your emotions. So what does he tell you? Give me your emotions. Come on, give them over to me. Sacrifice them. Burn them up on the altar because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you how to regulate your emotions. I'm going to teach you how to use your emotions. And it's okay to be angry, but don't sin and don't go kill everybody in the city like some people did. <laughs> Let's regulate those emotions. It's okay to have, you know, some form, just a little bit of anxiety, but to be just overly anxious all day, every day. No, I need for you to give up those emotions. Y'all see where I'm going with this? All right. Um, the priest and the offerer could share with the family. Relationship, peace, offering had to be in a state of ritual purity. So you had to be in a state of ritual purity. So y'all know what that means. No discharges, no nothing. Um, this offering uh, show fellowship between Elohim 
the mediator and the one who brought the offering, a relationship offering. All leftovers were burned on the third day, sound like Passover offering, and the blood must touch the altar. Y'all see these relationship between the priests and the Most High, between the family, the priests, and the Most High, between the person and the Most High. It's just, it's beautiful to me. I hope y'all getting it. The sin offering, the katat. All right, required sacrifice brought to restore a relationship. Mm -hmm. Only committed sins allow were unintentional sin or sins out of ignorance. Remember, we just talked about that. The only remedy for intentional sin was repentance. You're going to have to get that mercy and grace and pray that he have mercy and grace on you. That's why I said this whole thing is not about about a bunch of laws that you said commandments you go follow the laws it's about a relationship he don't wake up like the most high wake up every day and say you know what i'm about to punish everybody every day uh, sit down you you fired you about to get a whooping you about to get your house tore up like, i'm gonna take your child from you that is not what the most high do on a daily basis if you don't follow the law statutes and commandments he first extends mercy and grace to you Get your little self together. Sit your little hind parts down. Think about what you're doing. Get some mental help. Get some therapy. Lose some weight. Put the chicken wings down. Stop fussing at your wife so God doggone much. Quit shaming your husband. Stop provoking your children to anger. Pay attention to your supervisor. He's trying to teach you something. I'm trying to uh, bring about the best in you. Sharpen your character. Come on, obey your mother and your father. Quit going on Facebook blasting all Christians and you know your mama sit up in the church praying for your little big head self every Sunday. Think about what you're saying. Honor your parents. Yeah. <sighs> Purification has this requirement. The katat has a cleansing purpose for the flesh, right? A cleansing purpose spiritual purpose for the flesh sin makes you unclean and affects us spiritually so male goats are offered for priests or kings common persons a female goat is offered the blood is sprinkled seven times unto the veil and applied to the horns of the altar of incense for israel the blood is applied to the brazen altar if it is a king or a common person Blood is poured on the brazen altar for the king and the common people. No part of the animal is eaten or burned outside of the camp. So this just shows you the holiness and the intensity of this sin offering. Um, if it is brought by a king, the remaining meat can be, can be eaten. In extreme poverty cases, a grain offering could be brought. Listen. When I saw that, I was like the mercy, the compassion, the empathy, and the love of the Most High. Because he said, even the, the poor, if you cannot afford to bring the goat, bring your grain offering. Because I'm going to accept that. It's mercy and grace. <laughs> I, you know... Listen, I am not going to teach that the Most High is a taskmaster. Yes, you are going to reverence him and you don't play with the Most High. He is your Elohim. <laughs> However, he's a loving father and a mother on top of that. And he doesn't want to destroy you. He wants to bless you and do good unto you. So these sacrifices... They show relationship. Okay. The guilt offering. Let's talk about this one. I think this is the last one. This is a trespass offering. The root means the name. Y'all see that? Hashem. You see that Shem in there? Character and breath. The spirit of a person. This guilt offering is in relationship with with offenses we made against our neighbor so this is a neighbor you offended your neighbor trespass 
offense, guilt. This is not a sweet aroma. This is done in ignorance or by accident. All right. This is called a restitution offering 20% payment in damages. So you gonna love your neighbor. And it ain't just, I love you neighbor. Oh, you gonna love your neighbor. Honey, if you did anything that caused that neighbor to, to lose wages or loss of animal or anything, you got to pay up because that's what love do. It restores. Love brings restitution and restoration. It ain't about, I love you. And that's it, y'all. I said, thank you most high for opening up my mind, allowing the Ruach HaKodesh to allow me to see the relationship and the love and the mercy in every offering that you given to us in the Torah, that I was ignorant to it, that I did not understand it. And I thought it was unnecessary until you opened my eyes as I studied and asked for you to reveal it to me. Thank you most high for revealing your love, your mercy, your compassion and your justice in the animal sacrifices. And although I don't do it in 2024, and I've never seen it done, thank you for opening my eyes as I sat down at your feet to study. Y'all, this thing real. <laughs> and I am so grateful that the Most High has opened up my eyes to understanding the love language of the sacrifices. So Yom HaKippurim, I will never, ever forget it. Like that lesson, the kapoor, the covering, we must be covered. And I thank you, praise the Most High, for the covering of Hamashiach, Yeshua, how he covered my husband. And not only that he covered my husband, but he covered that 21-year-old and spared his life on Yom Kippur and the Shabbat. The double gate was open. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I pray that that young man will bow down and repent to the Most High Yah. I pray that he will come into covenant relationship and give his heart over to the Most High Yah and let him cleanse him. And that he accepts Messiah as his covering. Y'all, so I hope this helped y'all to understand Yom Kippurim. If you are having a hard time with that this year, you could take this, study it, and be prepared for next year, right? To go into it with fresh eyes and to rejoice and to be thankful for his mercy and his love and his compassion that he has showed us through the sacrifices. Hallelujah. All right, y'all. Till the next video. Shalom, everyone.